Okay, welcome back to the uh, Greek Astronomy and Diet uh, Festival. We are on our third panel and we're talking about olives and olive oil. Uh, olive and olive oil is, is so central to the Greek cuisine and gastronomy and to our life, actually. I, I, I grew up collecting olive, uh, olives in Kalamata and going to the presser uh, to, get, to get the fresh olive oil. And uh, still, that's all my childhood. I'm joined by my good colleague, uh, Jonathan Sutton, Dr. Uh, Sutton, who is going to introduce the speakers. Joe. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Bahalas. Um, so we've got a very exciting um, uh, session here. So liquid gold, olives, and extra olive oil. Um, so I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Um, and I'm going to just try with the first name. And maybe, uh, Professor Bahalas, you can help me with the second. Um, so the first speaker, we've got Mariana. The Vejoglu. <laughs> um, and she is an olive oil sommelier, co-founder of Ole uh, Sophia, which is a family-based olive producing estate. Um, the second speaker is uh, Pentelis. And the second name is... Ilya Kakis. Actually, the second speaker <laughs> will be El Emilia. Okay, then... so Amelia. So, yeah, so Amelia uh, works in research and development at Helmick um, and has graduated in chemistry um, and does a lot of analysis on olive oil. Um, and our third speaker is Pentalis, um, who is a commercial head of Greca Icons um, and has worked for nine years in import and export of olive oil and also taught in the trade as well. Um, and the final speaker is Dimo Thenis, uh, who specializes in destination branding um, and with particular emphasis on food, tourism, and of course, olive oil. Um, so without further ado, um, I'll pass over to our first speaker. Hello, everyone. Thank you. I'm sharing my screen. Before you start, Marianne, I, I'll... There is a little structure on this panel because the two ladies, Mariana and Emilia, are scientists and they're looking into uh, olive oil from a scientific point of view, while Pandelis and Demosthenes are more on the marketing and the promotion of the, of the uh, Greek olive oil. And you'll see that in their presentation, but it's good that you kind of understand this because they'll, they'll explain various things to you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay. You see everything fine? Good. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, Mr. Buchalis for calling me to share my love for extra virgin olive oil. Um, a few words about me, indeed, Mariana Devedzoglu. I know the name is a bit difficult, so let's just stick to Mariana. I am a physicist, but um, after I found out the true aromas of authentic extra virgin olive oil, I turned the other way and became an olive oil sommelier, an olive oil consultant, founding Olosofia and becoming an educator for extra virgin olive oil through our tastings and workshops and tours. Um, I'm also a producer of awarded high phenolic extra virgin olive oil. And just to break the ice between us, I love olive oil, but I don't really enjoy olives. Don't know about you. So I love together, olives. <laughs> you love them. <laughs> um, so uh, our journey together, we're going to see what exactly extra virgin olive oil is, what we look for in an extra virgin olive oil, discuss if all extra virgin olive oils are the same and walk together through the Greek olive grove to better understand what's so special about Greek extra virgin olive oil and how it helps us build an olive oil community. I will start with the technicalities and take our first step into the olive oil world. So after we start from the farm where we collect and harvest the olives, we go into the milling facility. There, we press the olives to produce extra virgin olive oil, virgin olive oil, or lampante oil. Now, extra virgin olive oil and virgin olive oil are the two top categories, with extra virgin being at the highest quality level. It has the best chemical profile, as Emilia will further on analyze. It has amazing aromas, 
nutrients and zero defects. Now, the word defect is a new one, but to give it a short explanation, a defect is a shortcoming that we find in olive oil, and it is the result of bad agricultural cultivation, harvesting, milling, and storage practices. So it's very important to understand the life cycle of olive oil in order to find defects. Sorry. Then we have virgin olive oil, which is the second best quality. It has a fair chemical analysis, has some aromas, and has small defects that are identified in the samples. And finally, we have Lambante oil, which is non-edible. In fact, the name Lambante is because it was used to burn lamps back in the days. And in order to make it edible, it has to go through a refinement process, which is a chemically intense process. Uh, and it decolorizes, deodorizes the oil, makes it um, more refined, as we see in labels, and then adds some extra virgin or virgin olive oil to it to make the regular olive oil that we see. So here we will be focusing, of course, on extra virgin olive oil, which is the protagonist. And let's say hello to extra virgin olive oil as the core of the Mediterranean diet, a diet that has been consistently awarded as the best diet globally. Um, going back a bit to history, olive oil was so important that it was the gift of Athena to the city of Athens through the sacred olive tree. And Homer used to call it uh, liquid gold, because of its um, high value. Not to mention that the Olympians uh, were awarded with olive reds as the ultimate honor for taking part in the Olympic games. So you see how important it was and still is in our society and culture. And finally, Hippocrates called it the great healer because of the many medicinal applications. So to give it a definition, extra virgin olive oil, EVOO for short, is the highest quality of olive oil produced directly from the pressing of olives and only by mechanical means. Now, if that sounds very confusing, I want you to keep a very simple analogy in mind. It means that extra virgin olive oil is a fruit juice, the olive juice. So think of it like you think of your uh, orange juice. You want your fresh orange juice to be healthy in order to enjoy all the nutrients and vitamins that it has to give you. Same with the olive oil. You want it fresh, you want it healthy. Okay, so keep that in mind, please. It will be very, very um, easy for you to better understand everything about olive oil. So how do we identify an extra virgin olive oil? We do need a chemical test, um, as Emilia will further on um, explain, and we also need an organoleptic analysis. Now, don't be afraid of the big words. That is a sensory test with our nose and mouth in order to find if there is a defect, shortcoming from brand practices or not. So what we're looking for when we are examining organoleptically an extra virgin olive oil is to find three main positive attributes that you all enjoy when you open up that bottle of olive oil at home. It is the fruitiness because it comes from a fruit. So it has to smell of freshness, of nature, of nice aromas. It is the bitterness because the olive fruit is a bitter fruit. If you pick it from the tree and try to eat it directly, you'll see that mm, it doesn't taste that good. And we're looking for pungency because pungency is that peppery and stingy sensation that olive oil gives us at the back of our mouth or throat, and it is the um, result of antioxidants. Of course, we uh, find no defects in extra virgin olive oil. That is why it's so good. But not all extra virgin olive oils are the same, and here is where the magic happens. Walk with me through the grove. We see the map of Greece. We see that it is a small country, but it has many different olive groves and many different olive varieties. So extra virgin olive oil is the new wine. The different varieties from north to south and east to west uh, give us different aromas, different profiles and different personalities, as I like to say because of the different terrain and the different cultivation practices. So it's not easy to compare different extra virgin olive oils. 
And to give you an example, we might find wonderful aromas in our extra virgin olive oil, such as tomato, artichoke, fresh cut grass, banana, ripe or not ripe, pepper, almond. In fact, you might have noticed in market that, that there are olive oils with flavors or mixed with, I don't know, uh, spices. Um, in order to make um, unification of these flavors, some people use that kind of products mixed, but a top chef and a top restaurant knows that they can add these flavors by selecting the right high quality extra virgin olive oil to share that aromatic profile and flavor profile on the dish with their customers. And this is what sets apart high end and top chefs and top dishes compared to moderate and average um, dishes. So all the fun, why a Greek extra virgin olive oil? First of all, it has a very welcoming and smooth flavor because who doesn't enjoy good food? Okay. But also the Greek olive grove remains very traditional because we're a small country and because we have a mixed terrain of uh, flat areas and then mountainous, it's not easy to have industrial mass and high intensity cultivation. As a result, everything remains very authentic. Uh, Greek extra virgin olive oil has a plethora of phenolic compounds per different varieties. The phenolic compounds that give us all the boost that our health needs. And as a result, we don't just enjoy calories from extra virgin olive oil, we enjoy nutritional value. The cultivation practices are such that the rich aromas are highlighted in high quality extra virgin olive oil. And of course, the Greek olive oil production on average fulfills international standards of olive oil with certified health claim to uh, referring to phenolic content, which is very, very important. Why? Because Greek extra virgin olive oil can be your ally, not just for life, it can be your ally for a good and tasty life. And what I want to pass on to you is that Greek extra virgin olive oil is not just a product. It is an entire experience in itself. So I invite you to explore it. I invite you to try an olive oil tasting. I give you a sample of uh, what an olive oil tasting looks like. Um, this is an olive oil tasting um, setting at our family grove where people come and visit and see the cultivation practices applied and then try different samples, different varieties to understand the importance of knowing how to choose your olive oil and how to appreciate it. So this will be a life changing experience um, and changing the way you see your wellness and your health, because after all, high quality extra virgin olive oil is a health investment. Please keep that in mind. OK, um, you can follow um, our page to learn more and share with us the love that we have for extra virgin olive oil. I hope I guided you well through this olive oil journey. And thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you very much, uh, Mariana. That's wonderful. and and. And having had your olive oil, it's unbelievable. So, uh, absolutely, <laughs> and needs to be. It needs also to be uh, tried on location because it, it, you get the aromas and you get uh, you get everything. Let's uh, go to Emilia without any further ado. And also, I should say that uh, when the conditions allow, we are going to have workshops here where we are going to try olive oil. We've got olive oil from. Um, Sparta and uh, we've got olive oil from Kalamata in Ananias and Sparta and those products actually you can find them uh, in supermarkets in, um, in, in Hong Kong and through Le the Levant uh, website and on the other side we've got the um, uh, Navarino icons um, uh, olive oil that you can find on City Super in Hong Kong for those people who like to, to get it. Okay. Emilia, welcome. Uh, nice to see you. And uh, we would like to thank Professor Buchalis for um, his invitation. Well, can you make your, your presentation full screen, please? Yes, it's full screen. 
OK. Uh, can you not see it? For us, it is not, but doesn't matter. OK, go to the next slide. Yeah, you can start. OK. Now you can see it. Well. You can start, Emilia. Extra virgin olive oil is the main uh, derived agriculture product of Greece. Uh, but extra virgin olive oil is the dominant ingredient of the Mediterranean diet. As you know, olive oil could be an extractive solvent for lipophilic compounds. A typical example concerns the intake of lycopene from tomato only the presence of olive oil. Not only uh, extra virgin olive oil is a health food, but it's also a superfood due to unsaturated lipids and its bioactive compounds. Consuming extra virgin olive oil, it could be reduced likelihood of cancer and metabolic diseases, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease based on scientific experiments. More specifically, extra virgin olive oil is rich in monounsaturated fat, fatty acid, the oleic acid. It contains other fatty acids like linoleic, and uh, it, ha it contains special macronutrients such as phenols, vitamin E, carotenoids, squalene, and others. Uh, Emilia, uh, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we cannot see your slides. Costas is going to play your slides from his computer, and you just need to tell him when to go to the next slide, okay? okay. Because we don't see that right now. To be considered an olive oil such as extra virgin, uh, might meet specifications which resulting from its chemical analysis and organoleptic characteristics, such as no defect and fruity greater than zero. Particularly, there are factors which affect the chemical and organoleptic characteristics, such as, firstly, all varieties. We know that Greek varieties have usually excellent organoleptic and chemical characteristics. Secondly, the agricultural factors, irrigation, sunlight, orchard management, the time of harvest and extraction are very important to produce um, an extra virgin olive oil, uh, which, um, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which will be fruity, and uh, written fennels. And finally, the storage conditions. Next, please. Uh, the conditions of storage uh, are, firstly, um, the extra virgin olive oil in a bottle not, not to be exposed to light. The temperature, uh, could be between 18 to 25 uh, degrees of Celsius. Absence of oxygen in the bottle and uh, packaging material, we prefer a dark uh, glass or PET dark bottles. Next, please. Now let's talk about the constituents of extra virgin olive oil. Oleic acid, the predominant ingredient of olive oil. Based on scientific experiments, oleic acid inhibits inflammatory processes, it has hypotensive effect, and it is probably responsible for the increase in the life expectancy of the Mediterranean peoples. Next slide. Since 2012, European Food Safety Association bears a health claim. As a result, 
um, uh, sorry, five milligrams per day of uh, olive oil polyphenols protects blood lipids from oxidation. So extra virgin olive oil with a high content of antioxidants is against free radicals in our body. As a result, high consumption of this type of olive oil could contribute to low risk of suffering from colon, breast, or skin cancer, as well as beneficial effects on aging, coronary diseases, and neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. Based on scientific papers, many biological and pharmaceutical effects contributed to phenols, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, neuroprotective, against osteoarthritis, and antioxidant effects. The main phenols are oleocanthan, oleacein, oleomissional, oleocoronal, oleuropein aglicon, elixirshade aglicon. The main phenols of extra virgin olive oil. Next slide. Oleocanthal. Oleocanthal is the most studied phenol of extra virgin olive oil. You can feel it when you try an extra virgin olive oil with a high phenol content because you, you, you are going to feel a stink inside your throat. This is the pungent taste. Oleocanthal has an inflammatory effect similar to ibuprofen. Uh, it can inhibit the growth and metastasis in hepatocytic carcinoma in humans and the growth in tumor in models of breast cancer. Next slide, please. Lately, clinical trials have been carried out which shown positive results if someone consume high phenolic extra virgin olive oil. One of them is the dietary intervention with extra virgin olive oil rich in phenols in my chronic lymphocytic leukemia. None of patients had to undergo chemotherapy. The other one is the uh, effect of extra virgin olive oil rich in oleocanthal on platelet aggregation. The, uh, the benefit was of, of the cardiovascular system can be increased with phenolic content of olive oil. And the third one um, showed the effect of Greek high phenolic extra virgin olive oil against the medium uh, phenolic and Mediterranean diet on people with mild mental disorder. Next, please. At Hellenic Fine Oils, we have already developed our phenolic extra virgin olive oil, Enigma, which contains oleocanthal, the most important olive oil phenol, and contains up to 400 milligrams per kilo. I would like to conclude with a uh, quote from Hippocrates, an ancient Greek physician. Our food should be our medicine, and our medicine should be our food. Next slide, please. Thank you for your attention, and thank you for your invitation. And um, I wish you consume more extra virgin olive oil high in uh, phenol content. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emilia. And, and as I said earlier, uh, Emilia is a true scientist, she's a chemist by background and she's doing her PhD on olive oil. And um, uh, you've got a lot of uh, bibliography there on the scientific evidence of, of how olive oil is much, much better. And I've got to say, I've got a couple of things, promotion because they are sponsors, Ananias and Sparta, you can find them in, uh, in supermarkets in Hong Kong, and um, uh, you can try those of those things. I'm not sure if those small ones with the different flavors are in Hong Kong, 
but you can but they they are right okay so you can try uh yourselves and especially when the restaurants are closed uh in the evenings have a salad with some of this absolutely fantastic that's why it's in front of me without further delay let's go to padelis and padelis is representing the competitive product from uh, uh navarino icons and uh that you can find in city city super padelis. Thank you, Professor Bukhalis, for giving me the opportunity to share my passion about extra virgin olive oil and the benefits of it, and how important the Mediterranean diet is for our body. There are, you see, there are a lot of secrets in cultivating and harvesting uh, the olive tree, but if you follow best practices, and that is to pick the olive fruit while it is still green, early harvest, it's, while the fruit is still green from the tree, Take it immediately for pressing within hours of harvesting and, keep, and keeping the temperature below 27 degrees Celsius. Then and only then you can have top quality extra virgin olive oil that you, you can use raw on salads or drizzle on top of cooked fish or mix it with vegetables. To see how everything started with olive oil, we need to go back about 4,000 years uh, back to the Minoan civilization from Crete in the southern part of Greece, where the Minoans started uh, cultivating and harvesting olive oil for the production of olive oil for home use. And later on, they started uh, commerce, making it known throughout the Mediterranean Sea, selling it to everybody at the known world at that time. In Greece, we love, we are in love actually with olive oil. And as you can see, we consume 17 liters per person per year on average. That is 34 of these bottles per person per year on average. I consume more, to be honest. In, uh, we use it literally everywhere from breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. We make all sorts of combinations and we appreciate the flavor and how it increases and enhances all the ingredients of the plate that we are using. In Spain, that uh, consumption drops down to 11. In Italy, it's nine. In Northern Europe, uh, it is about one liter. And I'm pretty sure that in Hong Kong, it's less than a liter, but I believe that with all these presentations today, we will try to increase that consumption. Let's talk about the Mediterranean diet now and see uh, what are the components of it. In the Mediterranean diet, we have less meat and more fish. We have greens, we have fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, and the combining factor of all this is the extra virgin olive oil. But how can we say the Mediterranean diet, which is based actually on the ancient Cretan diet, how can we say that it is the best diet in the world? As you can see, with 35 calorie intake being from fat. It is a paradox, don't you think? Well, the answer is that, uh, and the secret of it is that uh, extra virgin olive oil is the healthiest fat that you can have. And when you combine all the previous food elements that I described earlier together, you get a diet that has in uh, calorie intake in total, compared to the Western unhealthy type of diet, less calories, it is more nutritious and more healthy, and uh, it is the best diet to lose weight, and most importantly, to maintain the lost weight. Very important thing. When you combine olive oil with some food, I will give you two examples, you get to absorb, and this is the key word, to absorb, most of its elements. When you combine, and as I've heard from previous uh, uh, presentations, when you combine tomato with olive oil, you get to absorb lycopene, and this is a very strong antioxidant, and we need a lot of antioxidants in our body. When you combine tomato with olive oil, you get to absorb twice as much lycopene, and this is very important. Another example is when you combine fish rich in omega-3 with olive oil. When you drizzle uh, your olive oil on top of cooked fish, you get to absorb almost three times the omega-3 fatty acids. And omega-3 is very important for the anti-inflammatory action we need in our body to fight an, uh, inflammations that when they are accumulated in a chronic uh, state, we get all sorts of problems. 
I will go on with the Mythbusters. This is my favorite subject. And we will try to uh, reply the million dollar question. Is olive oil good for frying? Yes or no? It's not just good for frying. It is the best and only method one should use when, when frying. And there are three reasons for that. Reason number one, it has to do with the smoking point. When you heat your oil, whatever oil you are using, you reach a point of temperature where when the oil you are using starts to disintegrate and lose the consistency. We have the breaking up of the chemical bonds. And when the bonds are broken, we have the creation of free radicals. Free radicals are toxic and carcinogenic. They are the very bad stuff that attacks the membrane of the human cell. And it is the creation of tumors, cancer, and all sorts of problems. So we want to avoid the creation of free radicals. When you are using vegetable oil, common oil, such as corn flour, sunflower, you have the creation of free radicals at a lower level because you are using polyunsaturated fat. Poly comes from the Greek word many, meaning that vegetable oils have multiple double bonds that are weaker and they break up at lower temperatures, creating the free radicals, as I have explained. You get this breaking up from 180 degrees until 190 degrees, meaning that common oils, vegetable oils, will create these free radicals from the first time they you, you fry with oil, and you must throw it away from the first time. On the other hand, when you fry in extra virgin olive oil of top quality, you have monounsaturated fat coming from the Greek word one. It has one double bond, which is stronger and breaks up at a higher temperature from 190 until 215, meaning that you can fry two or three times uh, with olive oil before you uh, need to throw it away because eventually it will create free radicals. Reason number two, scientists in University of Cordoba in Spain have conducted an experiment with vegetables and they measured the antioxidant level of these vegetables before trying three different cooking methods. The first batch was boiled in water, the second batch was boiled in water and olive oil, and the third batch was uh, they used some olive oil in a pan, they shot it, if you know the method. When they measured the antioxidant level after the cooking methods, they have discovered that the vegetables in the pan contained more antioxidants than previously, meaning the antioxidants from the olive oil migrated into the food, making it more nutritious and more healthy. And the third reason has to do with uh, deep frying with olive oil. It creates a thin membrane in the outer surface of the food, not allowing more olive oil to get into the food, soaking it with uh, oil, meaning that it has less calories because it contains less olive oil inside the food. Continue on with the myth busters. Uh, we have talked about the spiciness in the throat. I will, I will explain some uh, uh, meaning about the polyphenols here. When you try olive oil, it burns the upper part of the throat. This is the uh, oleocanthal. This is the spicy feeling. People mistake this, Emilia, you, you know what I'm talking about. People mistake this with acidity. However, no one in the world can detect acidity in the mouth. Acidity is a result analysis found in a lab. When the olive oil you're trying is burning your throat, then this is an indication of top quality of polyphenols and the anti-inflammatory action we need in our body to fight inflammations. Bitterness is another sign of quality in, a, in an olive oil. When you try olive oil and it is bitter like needles in, in your tongue, then what you feel is the antioxidant part, the other polyphenol called oleacin. If it is bitter, then it's good and top quality. And finally, about how time treats olive oil. It doesn't get better just like wine. It's quite the opposite. Once you open your bottle, then you have to consume it like a Greek. You have to consume it within one month. When the oxygen gets in contact with olive oil, all the healthy characteristics that I have described before start, start to decline sharply. So you have to consume it within one month and appreciate it and 
uh, have all this healthiness in your body. Finally, I will give you the definition given by Bill Briva, uh, the head instructor from the Culinary Institute of America. We have a lot of foods that we want to enter that category, so he gave this de definition. A food product that withstood the test of time has no benefits and no known downside that is versatile, can make our food nutritious and healthy. And to be honest, there is no other definition uh, to describe better the olive oil that we know and appreciate uh, for more than 4,000 years from the Minoan times. Without any change, we still taste the same olive oil that was being produced by the Minoans. It's versatile and can make all sorts of food combination enhancing the ingredients of the food. And for sure it is nutritious and healthy. So if you can make one small change in your daily uh, eating habits is to replace all other fats and use olive oil in place uh, of, of these fats to enhance and uh, uh, the taste of, of the food you're, you are tasting. You can find our products in the city super supermarkets, the extra version olive oil that I have shown you uh, live here, the Kalamata olives and the Greek honey, a very taste and delicious Greek honey. These are the pillars of the Greek uh, culinary tradition. You can find them in city super supermarkets. Any questions? Yes. Evidence, evidence one. Evidence um, one. I've now stopped taking uh, wines or anything else to colleagues who invite me at home and I get this from City Super and they are blessed with their presence. Thank you very much. Thank you, with, As we are running out of time, let's get Demosthenes and then we'll have a, a little conversation afterwards. Demosthenes is currently in Chios Island where I did my undergraduate degree and I'm very, very jealous when I realized yes, where sure. it is. You should. <laughs> I'll give your regards, mate. So, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very glad. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I've never been to China. And I suppose that some of you from China who hear this never been to Greece. So, this is one more, even, even I am, I'm even more delighted to be there. So, before we start the journey, my title suggests, let me get to another journey, to the journey of this flame on, on this photo, through the centuries to Beijing for the Beijing 2022 Olympic Games that goes on as we speak. And in one picture, we have China, we have Greece, we have tradition, we have peace, we have civilization, and of course we have olive brands, you can notice it in the hands of the lady in the middle and the first runner on the left. So let's continue. We will take a mythical journey full of taste, poetry, and magic, a mythical journey to Greece. I'm Demosthenes Brusalis. I'm a proud Greek. I do branding, which means I tell fascinating stories and create great images for the brand to do the job. And I will be your guide for the next nine minutes. So let's start by hearing the ancient uh, poet. I am in his homeland, just like Professor Bukalis suggested um, in his birthplace. So Homer said that olive oil is liquid gold. We rush a bit in time, 6,000 years ago, somewhere in the Aegean, Naxos Island. To be exact, we found this magnificent olive tree. You, this is one tree, this is one tree, okay? So you can, you can see a whole class of students standing inside it. We call it Yerondoelia, which means the old lady olive obviously why, you can see it. And a few centuries later, Hippocrates said that olive oil is a great healer. He should know he's the father of modern medicine. And Plato, about the same time, said that olive oil is a pain relief. Rustle time, 3,005 years ago, somewhere in Thrace, in Northern Greece, very near Cyclops Polyphemus cave, we found this monument of, of nature which is the uh, oldest organized olive grove in Europe, perhaps in the world. And to have an idea of how, how big these trees are, you can see the proud owners, well, not exactly owners, keepers, you might say, you never own 
a monument of nature, uh, just to see the size of the trees. And this olive grove for 2,005 years, 500 years now, produces every year, every year, extra virgin olive oil. And this, this time now we have 3,500 bottles of this every year. And if you taste it, I can guarantee that you can taste history itself. It's a taste of history. All right, all right, so far. And then what? They lived happily ever after. after. So let's open a parenthesis right here. We're talking about a journey to Greece, but what is Greece? What is Greece? Greece has definitely a strong brand name. Everybody knows it. If, if you're minimally educated, probably you've heard of it or you have something to say about it. So it's a strong brand name. But what about brand Greece? If brand is the sum of things that we recall when someone tells us a brand name, Greece in this instance. So what do you recall? Is it this? It's definitely this. Is it this? Perhaps if you are from China or from other parts of the world, this is Greece, but this is not, not just that. This is not just Greece. There are many things more. And what about the brand olive oil of Greece, which is a part of the brand Greece? So what is Greece? in this context, extra virgin olive oil. Let's ask someone who should know, a Nobel Prize winner, our national poet of the Elites, who said that if I have an olive tree, a grapevine and a boat, I can reconstruct Greece because this is the essence of Greece. Extra uh, um, olive tree is a part of Greece's essence. We managed to have plus of 100 plus native varieties. We don't even know how many. Not, not just because we, don't ca we can't count, that's, that's not it, but because olive tree is a truly magical tree. Same variety, different soils, different places, different climates, totally different results. Let me give you an example. Our most renowned uh, variety, it's Koroneki. And I will give you four different examples. The, the, the sign above is... Uh, the EU sign for protected designation of origin. I'll come to that in a minute. So I, I have four different uh, all, uh, extra virgin olive oils. Setia, Kalamata, Hanya, and Tarhanes. Different places, totally different results. Same variety, so different results that the EU thinks that each one of them are so unique, so, so different, so valuable that needs protection. This is what this tree does. So let's let's pass to the fruits. I love olives, by the way. Uh, so table olives are a true superfood as well. And uh, Greece is the global leader on this, is the king. So let me introduce you to Her Majesty the Queen in that context. This is it. To, 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 to the international uh, consumer, there are two olives, Kalamata olives and olives. Kalamata so olives is the best. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, so, Kalamata olives, PDO again, protected again. And speaking of protected uh, uh, designation of origin and protected geographical indications, let me, let's take a look at the Greece's portfolio on that. So, we managed to have 11, 11 table olives and 32 different extra virgin olive oils under this category. It so says something. Extra virgin olive oil is, like the previous uh, speaker said, an all-natural, underlined, an all-natural premium juice. That's just about it. Simple, I'll come to that, yet majestic, extremely healthy, delicious and fresh. It's food. It's not medicine. So let's open our second parenthesis. Professor Bukhalis asked me to, to speak about how to market extra virgin olive oil, but, which I do for many years, but how you market a food so simple? And what do I mean by that? I mean that simplicity, its simplicity leaves very limited room for innovation. Simple by simple, we mean, it's simple. We cultivate it, collect the fruits, crush them, squeeze them, take the juice, put it in a bottle, that's about it. Yes, we've been, we've evolved through the years, through the centuries, yes, we use technology. Yes, we even use science, but then at the end of the day, that's just about it. That's it. It's natural juice. So how you market something so natural? That means that it is not even consistent. The same olive grove each year produces different results. The same crop 
the same um, olive grove in the same crop produces different results in the beginning, the middle, and the end of the crop. So how do you market something so natural? Let me give you a few facts. The previous uh, uh, speakers said a lot of it. I will underline that it is obtained by mechanical means. What does, it, what does that mean? It means that it's really natural extraction. No chemicals, no addings, no nothing. Just mechanical extraction. And that makes it by default superior to all vegetable oils. Polyphenols, I don't have to say anything about it. The previous speakers said a lot of it. We even allowed to put head claim by the European Union on pack, which is something. It adds taste, must be very careful on that. It's just not oil. It, it, it adds to everything you do. It has great similarities to wine, great extra virgin olive oils call for trained palate. You have to be trained to really appreciate great uh, extra virgin olive oil. And like great wines, it inspires, it inspires you to find the correct food and pair it with each one of this magnificent thing. So, okay, extra virgin oil, fine. But why Greek extra virgin olive oil? Well, on that, you should trust the Greeks. Simple as that. I, I know how the saying goes, ne uh, fear the Greeks even bearing gifts, but that, that's not the case. And it was not said by a Greek, it was said by a Trojan, which says something. Well, anyway, in that case, trust the Greeks. Why? To us, it is, we don't say extra virgin olive oil, we don't say extra copper, ten olive oil, we just say Ladaki. Ladaki. To us, it's the only olive oil. It's the only oil. It's Ladaki, it's ours. It's a nickname. I, I, I can't explain the English very well. So let's observe, observe what we eat and how we eat. This is eating in Greece. It's 20 minutes away from the center of one of the major Greek cities, Thessaloniki. Look at it. Imagine yourself there, eating there. And you are in, in very close to the center of the city. Imagine this. This is eating in Greece. Greek aromatics, the best in the globe. By far, these happy goats will give their milk in a few minutes and it would go in your feta, in your Greek salad. This is a house yard. Simple as that. And you're in Greece. All right. So celebrate our incredibly simple, incredibly simple, delicious and healthy cuisine. Every Greek recipe starts with the same phrase. Every Greek recipe in a pot we pour some olive oil, simple as that. And we produce this. This is supposed to be a salad, but it's a full meal. It's choriatiki. You can see the olives in, you, believe me, the extra virgin olive oil is under it, a lot of it. Fava, even less material. Fava, magnificent. You will not believe the taste of it. We really know our olive oil. How do we prove this? 60% of our Greek families are related directly or indirectly to extra virgin olive oil. We manage to eat ourselves 60% of the extra virgin olive oil we produce every year, which is a lot. To, to give you an idea, this is what the Greeks produce, uh, eat and uh, uh, versus to USA, Germany, and China. We really love our extra virgin olive oil, definitely. We even have mouth-watering dishes based on that, lavera, lavi lavera, such as fasolakia, vegetarian, Melijanes, vegan, and vegetarian. Yemista as well, stuffed uh, tomatoes and peppers. These are only a few of the reasons you should trust Greeks from that. You should trust Greeks on extra virgin olive oil. And as an aftertaste of all this, just keep in mind one simple thing. Every single taste is by far in its best when it is tasted in its birthplace. So if you really want to taste Greek, food. If you really want to taste, taste Greek olive oil, come to Greece. You should come to Greece. We're waiting for you. I will show you very briefly all the places that you see on the background of, of my presentation till now. It is not there because there are tourist destinations, or some of them are, but it's not there for that. It's there because it is related to the production, cultivation and production of olives, of olive tree and extra virgin olive oil. So imagine yourself in one of these places, winter or summer, doesn't matter, it's the same, it's always beautiful, and eating the food, some of the food I've, I've shown you, and flavor the extra virgin olive oil. I mean, you should really taste it. You should really 
test it. You should really try it. All right? So we we'll welcome you here. We're waiting for you to come to Greece and enjoy all this. Be here with us. Live like a local. Live like a Greek for a few days and create taste memories from Greece that will last you for all your life. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, Dimostenis. And we start from this here. And hopefully within a month or so, when the government allows us, we'll have the opportunity to try these things in Hong Kong. And for those of you who don't want to wait for a month, please go and buy them uh, from the supermarkets around. That's wonderful. Uh, Jonathan, would you like to close this session and then we're going to go to the next one because we're running out of time. Yeah. Thank you. So we don't, we don't have any time for questions, right? But we'll have, we'll have the masterclass and these guys are going to be Wait, invited okay. back. So that time we'll have a more conversation. Hopefully. Okay, fantastic. So, so I learned a lot. Um, I'd like to thank all of our panelists. Um, I think my takeaway is... Um, Definitely Greek olive oil is super, super good and even better in Greece, right? Um, so it'd be cool to see the transference of that in China or other places. Um, so I'm very tempted to go across and, and try it for sure over there. So I'd like to thank all of our panelists, uh, Mariana, uh, Patelis, uh, Amelia, and Dimothenis um, for all thank your you. really, really uh, insightful information. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank, thank you, guys.